I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang. Welcome to the big picture. How is our community healing after the tragic, racially motivated shootings in Buffalo? We'll hear from prominent attorney John Elmore. And what legal recourse do victims' families have? Reporter Tony Farina talks with attorney Terry Connors. Plus, as Memorial Day comes upon us, we remember those who served our country and find out if a career of service is right for you. Right here, right now, on The Big Picture. Hello everyone and welcome to The Big Picture. On Saturday, May 14th, an unspeakable act took place in Buffalo when a lone gunman went on a shooting rampage at a Topps Market on Jefferson Avenue. This racially motivated act of hate claimed 10 lives and injured three others. One week after the incident, residents of the city were asked to reflect on those lost with a moment of silence. Shortly after news of this tragedy spread across Western New York, our first guest appeared on Channel 2 with anchor Claudine Ewing to offer his insights in an emotional live television appearance, all while details were still coming in. Our guest is attorney John Elmore, a Western New York native in practice for over 30 years, winning many awards for his legal work, both here in our hometown and in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. He's a former New York State Trooper and is author of the book, Fighting for Your Life, The African-American Criminal Justice Survival Guide. Attorney Elmore jo joins us through Zoom technology. Welcome, John. And I have to tell everybody how long we've been friends and we've known each other and colleagues. And I'm so honored that you could spend the time to answer our questions and talk to us here on The Big Picture. Thank you so much in advance. Where were you when you first heard about the shootings? Judge, I was, I was on my way to uh, dinner with uh, two, uh, with, with another couple and, and my, my, my girlfriend. And uh, I received a, a call to come to Channel 2 uh, because there was a shooting and they needed some legal commentary. I was in my office um, at the time I heard that the shooting was, was going on. And it was, uh, it was very scary to me because it is a place where I frequented. It's, it's a street where I sponsor um, block club parties, uh, where I frequent some of the establishments that are on that street. And um, I knew that people that I know and care about would be somehow impacted. What was it like to experience to process this while it was going on while appearing on television and you were still looking to find out exactly what happened in details how are you doing all this how are you managing and processing it all well i'd put on a bunch of hats um, um as somebody that's familiar with the area knows that community i had to describe that um, as a former police officer I had to describe what to expect, what the police are doing, and as and as a as a lawyer, um, I had to to discuss the possible legal implications. Um, so um, my my brain was just uh, wired up man, and just just ready to go. Just on fire, I'm sure. Now, we've yeah. seen such an um, outpouring of support from everyone in our area and across the nation, actually, with food and fund drives. And do, how important is all of that? Or has all of that support been? Well, I, I, I think it's important because there, there's a community that's in the middle of a food desert that lost uh, the place where they can get fresh fruit, meat, vegetables, groceries. Um, and, and other needed staples, and so, so, unfortunately, that was that was taken away. Uh, and what's left in the neighborhood is a bunch of of uh, 
corner grocery stores. So I think that's important for the people that, that live there uh, to be able to, to receive the, the counseling that's, that's going on. I know all the TOPS employees are getting counseling at the library that's a block away. Um, I know that a lot of churches have been providing prayer vigils and, and support for the other families that were affected. Uh, fraternities, sororities, uh, corporations have donated money uh, to help. But you know, the, the thing of it is that uh, there, were, there were 10 families that lost loved ones. There were other people um, who were somehow injured in this that survived. And what happened that day is gonna be with them for the rest of their life. And, and there's a difference between uh, sympathy and, and pain. And so a lot of people that are there um, offering their services and help, uh, that's out of, out of sympathy and, and probably some pain. But the families that, that experience this tragedy, this is pain that's gonna be with them for a, a lifetime. Before we lose you, especially, I want to talk to you, of course, about the legal aspects. The district attorney was vocal and swift in the arraignment of the suspect, very swift. Now, what's the next step? What's going to happen in the, in the legal process? Well, there's a parallel prosecution, a state prosecution, and a, and, and a potential federal prosecution. The district attorney's office is charged this defendant with murder in the first degree. He's facing life without the possibility of parole. He's represented by two uh, court-assigned attorneys. Uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office and the FBI are investigating this as a person, as a possible uh, a hate crime. Uh, there's uh, domestic terrorism laws on the books that make this a potential death penalty case. And if if you look at what happened in in Boston with the Boston uh, Marathon bomber where three people were killed. Uh, that defendant um, was sentenced to death. Last year, the Court of Appeals upheld that death sentence. Uh, if you look in South Carolina, uh, Dylan Roof was sentenced to death under the same circumstances. He killed nine people and his death penalty sentence was upheld. New York State doesn't have a death penalty. It is very possible that the federal government could seek a death penalty case uh, just take the death penalty in this case. Uh, all of this is going to take a time. Take time. I think, you know, the two of us <laughs> know the legal proceedings and how how the system works. People cannot expect resolution, legal resolution of this matter, in a in a quick matter, in a quick time, quickly, right? No, uh, um, I mean because he's uh, he, he has political reasons. I don't think he's going to like walk into court and say, I plead guilty and I want to spend the rest of my life uh, in jail. I think that the attorneys that are representing him are going to file every possible motion um, and and raise every possible defense. Uh, it could be an insanity defense, uh, motions to suppress evidence. Uh, they're going to make uh, the, 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 the state and make the government prove their case. Uh, what do you think this, how do you think this affected, if at all, police and the members of the community here in Buffalo? How do you think that the police and their relationship with the community will be affected, if at all, by this tragedy? Judge, th that's a great question. And, and last summer, Buffalo was burning. There was a lot of, of tension and, and fighting and arguing uh, because of the death of George Floyd and, and the relationship between the African-American community and the police was very, very strained. Uh, what I saw on Jefferson Avenue and, and, and Tops was a bonding uh, between law enforcement and the African-American community. Uh, the police officer that responded to this uh, incident within a minute um, and, and captured uh, this, this thug, uh, saved lives. Um, the, the, the police risk their lives. I, I see the, the, uh, a, a stronger bond um, and, and stronger ties and better police and community relations because of what happened. Yeah, I think, I think that was so obvious and how the police themselves were so affected by the incident. And of course, a former police officer was uh, 
involved as well. So it's, it was just a tragedy all around. But maybe when, when you talk about something good, the slightest good coming, people are going to appreciate uh, the community relations between the police and, uh, and the public. Attorney John Elmer, thank you so much for joining us with your thoughts. We, we hope to talk to you again in the near future as some important other conversations continue to take place in our community. We will be right back.